Hi. <laughs> Hi, sorry. Um, I'm just trying to find a quiet space to go. This seems like I got one. Oh, thank you so much. Where are you at? Are you on tour right now? Well, home, but on tour. We just did our first show last night and uh, back in LA in rehearsal to uh, get ready for our first headline show on Wednesday. That's so exciting. Well, um, yeah. pop it on. I should introduce you, Billy. It's Billy Howard Dell. Um, I'm Lindsay, and you might know Billy from A Perfect Circle, most uh, notably the co founder of A Perfect Circle. Um, and you've got a new album out that you just dropped on Friday. So, this is the tour that you're getting ready for to, to prep for uh, that new album. And you're making a stop at Fine Line on the 24th. Uh, I've got a lot of questions for you, Billy, but um, thank you for taking the time to be with us. Um, yeah. First off, I think uh, Ashes Divide was your solo project um, or is a solo project that you've done before. And so now you're doing this solo project under your name. And I'm curious what the difference is. Why, why release it under your name as opposed to a different name? I mean, a few reasons. When I started making the record, I knew it was going to sound different from the first Ashes record. And this was always meant to be Ashes' second record, um, which is nice because it kind of took the pressure off of me in a little bit of a way. Like I thought, well, I can do whatever. But, you know, a long time's passed between records. So, you know, of course it's going to change. But um, as I started to make the record, it got further along. Um, it just became like the, the the whole trajectory of the record was kind of a look back as to when I was, you know, coming up musically and what was in, inspiring to me before I even became a musician. And this is sort of like a look at that time in my life of uh, like all of our lives, right? When music hits you and the conversation that you have with yourself or with others of like, hey, what was it? What was the first record you bought? What was the first thing that you felt cool for discovering that maybe your peers didn't know or, or you got pulled into and, and like all that, all that like young energy feeling of being like a 11, 12, 13, especially like middle school, right? 13, 14 year old, that's kind of where I went to with this record. So, um, you know, describing what musical normal was for me, that uh, seemed to be the right way to go. And then as I started to think about all the stuff I've done with APC and with Ashes, the demos for all those songs really were almost like these are these songs on this record are like those demos flushed out to their normal completion without kind of taking any turns where the turn with APC was, you know, my also my love of guitar and heavier music and like bringing some of that into the hybrid fold musically and uh, going that route and Ash is sort of a continuation of that, but like taking the next step after APC and where I wanted to have something a little more off tempo and like a little even more energy. Now this is like, okay, I'm going to go back to kind of the, the, the plan A of uh, the way the demos were started and, and take them to their completion of place where I didn't know how to do when I was younger. I didn't know how to do it even 10, 15 years ago. And now I can and technology allows and, you know, my experience is allowed. So kind of, this is the record that came from them. So cool, and you're a multi instrumentalist, so ish. Um, ish. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but do you, and you're playing a lot of instruments on this record, is that right, too? Yeah, but the same as APC, the same as Ashes, you know, it's coming for the most part, except for one la the last uh APC record. Josh Freeze has played drums for the most part, and then I played you know bass, guitar, and keys, and um. For the most part and um yeah it's a familiar setup but you know i think between josh and i we get a lot done and and uh have this kind of synergy that that works and i just i just know whatever i kind of program as beginning drums he will take an angular programmed beat and really bring the humanness to it and the flow and everything like that so uh that's always been nice and uh yeah that's really cool and well, and, and and for those who don't know, um, I think I don't know. Is it? It's kind of like the dream of a lot of people, I'm sure. You got started with guitar teching, and yeah. then you were doing it for you know Nine Inch Nails, Tool. The list goes on. David Bowie, <laughs> and yeah. 
that's crazy. Could you have a crazy story touching from, with Bowie at all or a great experience uh, from being with him? Yeah, I had a great experience. And I, uh, yeah, so I was working for Nine Inch Nails. It was actually Trent Reznor's Guitar Tech. And Bowie and, and Nails did a co-headlining tour in 95. And I got approached uh, to take care of Reeves Gabrell, the lead guitar player in Bowie. So what happens, I, I kind of teched for both both acts and then continued on once uh nails stopped i continued on with bowie and went to europe with them finished out the rest of the tour and it was great because reeves and david were tight so i had this unique kind of um you know kind of access i'd say to david and, you know shared a meal many times at catering which was very cool just to even be a fly on the wall to sit and hear him and Reeves, especially him and coco his, his longtime assistant of 30 plus years uh talk about you know the old times, <laughs> that was very cool. But the, the biggest thing is just, he is, the coolest thing about Bowie, he is what I think, what I thought of him from afar, he is that up close. He's smart or was uh, unfortunately smart and you know, just always searching for the next thing. He had a young energy to him that always evolved and was always curious of how things could move and evolve and move forward. Um, yeah, a funny story. I think the, my favorite of <laughs> working in that is I'm sitting at my laptop. Now, remember, this is early. But this is, I'm like, I'm texting or emailing my girlfriend at the time, like, you know, what's happening. And I just, someone, the caterer, of course, the caterers always have the coolest new music. Garbage was the new band that, you know, I, I don't even know if the album was out yet, but it was just about to be. And I got like an early copy and I guess he did too. And, uh, I'm sitting writing a very intimate email and David's over my shoulder and I didn't know it. And I'm writing something to her. And then I said something about garbage and he goes, I love that fucking band as well. And I was like, thanks. I was like, what the hell are you reading my email for? Like, yeah, it was, it was the surreal moment to be like half flattered and half pissed that David Bowie's leaning over my shoulder, creeping my email. Sorry. Oh my God. That's really cool. Wait. And you said the caterers would have the new music. Yeah, the you know when you tour like touring caterers that come along with you like eat uh, eat the beat and um, I forget which caterer it was but they always had like they're always in the kitchen blasting cool stuff and you'd be like what is that what you know what amazing trip hop next Portis had thing are they putting on or, you know so it's kind of they were I, I find that in general to stereotype caterers they always have cool music going. I did not know this about caterers like that that's gonna blow my i have a lot of uh people in circles who tour and stuff and nobody's ever just let me know that the caterers are the ones who know where and what the uh, new stuff is well well now it's like you know internet age has made everything i don't know watered down or access is easy but when you know if it was back pre-internet which I'm, this is what i'm talking about it came from you getting a mixed cassette from somebody that hopefully they labeled what the songs were, you know? And so that's kind of what I remember. Those were like the gatekeepers. Well, okay. Well, so speaking of, is there anything that kind of uh, made you excited new music wise, that's like standing out to you? I, I always blank on questions like this when people are like, so what's your favorite thing right now? But if they're yeah, like right now, yeah, <laughs> I've been so inside this record. I have to say like kind of self, you know consumed with all things inside of what normal was <laughs> that um yeah it would take me a minute i'd probably sit here and stare off for a while okay. um, I but i listened to you know it's funny the joke is like yeah that, so the same things i've listened to the past for the past 30 years that's probably what i'm listening to um at the moment but i'm sure there's other new things that i am I'm just blanking well yeah no totally well, and I brought up earlier, like, okay, it's probably like a dream. I know there are probably a lot of people who do the guitar teching and then they're hoping maybe one day they'll have a chance to uh, have their own band, have their own solo project and things like this. And uh, I just think it's so cool that, um, and I, and, you know, I got it from the internet, so I know it's a hundred percent true, but learning that Maynard was like, Hey, can I, if I could ever lend my voice to something you want to do, um, that would be great. Is that like that's a high compliment is that kind of what started the forming of a perfect circle sort of yeah i mean you might have said it in a more uh gracious and polite way than he said it it's oh. a, a little more a little more frank probably a little more frank um 
Yeah, it was something like that. I mean, Maynard and I were at that point roommates for a few months and, um, you know, I'm working on stuff, mostly in headphones, sometimes in speakers and him just passing my bedroom, you know, from his bedroom, just could hear stuff. So he heard what I was up to and somehow, you know, found a time hole in his schedule, uh, you know, hole in his schedule. And yeah, that's kind of where it hatched. Um, kind of as simple as that. Very cool. Um, well, like I said, a fine line, June 24th is when you're going to be playing. And then is it you're going to be opening up for Pussifer as well later on? Did I read that? Uh, only one more show in, in uh, Michigan. Um, that's our only other. We opened last night. Our first show tour was last night. Very first show opening for Pussifer at the Greek Theater in L.A., which is you know a huge venue. And man, pressure was on. We were we uh, I've had hurdle after hurdle uh getting this tour or getting the, even this rehearsals off the ground we only played i can say it now we only played through the set one time at 11 15 p.m the night before the show and that's the only time we got through all seven of the songs for that set what? and to rewind to rewind to that which is crazy to, like, like we got up there and we just didn't know that playback was going to keep working or you know we had gear that was not even labeled yet so getting it set up there's so many there's many uh, dark forces at work here keeping <laughs> it was like i'm not one of those mercury and retrograde people but like you know I, I have to say like we've been getting i've been getting many messages from the universe not to do this tour but uh <laughs> and we've been pushing on and to the point of like our bass player is still in canada couldn't get in the country which held us up quite a bit had to postpone the first show, about to postpone the second show, which is supposed to be tomorrow, which we just found out because we're, we're literally not ready for a headlining set at this point. And we're gonna not postpone any more moving forward. <laughs> so Wednesday in San Francisco is gonna be our first show, our first headlining show, it's just two days away. We've got seven songs to learn in the next, uh, as soon as I hang up with you till tomorrow. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I have yeah. all the faith in the world that you can make it happen. And I have all the more appreciation for you <laughs> taking time to talk to me when you got some stuff to do. Uh, yeah. But that's crazy. I, You know, it seems like a lot of people right now, just these last couple of weeks have been saying like, what's going on? Are there planets like all out of whack and stuff? So I yeah. hope things line up better and that things go so smoothly for you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. This is the time I'll take any of that stuff. I'll take any of those, um, any of those, uh, I don't know, any, any uh, spells, well wishes, uh, you know. You know, yeah. You uh, what, what, what is it, sage? I don't know. What are, what are some of the good luck things we could tap into? You want to sage the energy, cleanse it yeah. all out, and then maybe get some rocks. I don't know which ones, but you talk yeah. to everybody about getting some good crystals, some good mojo. You're Com right. Comment in and I'll, I'll, I'll partake whatever it takes yeah. okay <laughs> well uh thank you so much i i hope that you have a great time on tour and uh what normal was again is the record uh get it if you haven't gotten it already just came out on friday and uh yeah we'll see you on the 24th at fine line and i hope that everything smooths out and goes just awesome <laughs> this. thanks thanks i think it's gonna be great it's gonna All right. be well thank you so much billy have a right, wonderful thanks. time and uh, thanks, thanks Billy. Right, bye. Bye. bye.